Coming up next on The Jeff Crilly Show, you're going to meet a real disruptor of the fashion industry. She makes vegan cowboy boots. Her journey just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is The Jeff Crilly Show. Well, when the world thinks of Texas, they often think about cowboy boots, cowboy hats, and of course, cowboy beef, right? So what is a vegan doing disrupting the fashion industry? Kat Mendenhall is with me in studio. Thanks for coming on. Well, thanks, yeah. Jeff, for having me. This is a great opportunity to share my story. Well, I, I call it a fish out of water story because you can't think about cowboy boots without thinking about leather. But one of your taglines is it's time to give leather the boot. That's so. <laughs> correct. It is. <laughs> How did this all begin for you? Because you, you grew up uh, around cattle and you're, you're a Texas girl. I am. I'm born, raised here in Dallas. Um, I, both of my grandparents had working uh, cattle farm ranches in southeast Oklahoma. So I definitely had a lot of uh, time spent on their farms and being around the uh, cattle industry. But, you know, like uh, we all at some point in our life make some changes. And 11 years ago, I was doing some research about maybe how to eat better and feel better and stumbled upon the vegetarian vegan world, which I did, had no clue what that was. And a part of my research, uh, moving into a vegan diet, I started learning more about how animal uh, cruelty exists in our food industry. And so that led me to really wanting to share more about veganism with the world. I wasn't equipped to do that myself with the knowledge. So I found a Main Street Vegan Academy, which is a very immersive academy in New York City. Um, it teaches you, basically gives you the, the fundamentals to go out and share veganism with others, help them on their own journey. And while I was there, I saw a video about the animal leather industry, and I had no idea that cows were raised solely for their skins, that it's a billion dollar industry in itself. Also, the chemicals that they use in these tanneries are very um, like sickening and can lead to death to the people that work in the tanneries. So, and a lot of them are children, in fact. So when I heard this and learned that, I just was devastated and thought, there's no way I will support the leather industry anymore. Um, I don't want to sit on it. I don't want to carry it in a handbag. And I definitely don't want to wear it. But I had a huge love affection with cowboy boots. Um, they were an extension of my personality. They're the native Texan boot, you know, a native, native Texan shoe. Um, so I was kind of crying in my beer to a, a fellow uh, attendee at the Main Street Vineyard Academy, like, oh, my poor boots, I, I can't do this anymore. What am I going to do? I'm never going to be able to wear cowboy boots again. And she said, Kat, go make them. Go make them vegan. Wow. Okay, I want to put up on the screen, and if we can slowly scroll down, people probably, when they look at it, they think it's leather, don't they? They do. It has the same aesthetic look, feel, comfort, um, breathability that animal leather does. Our boots go through the same exact process as a pair of animal leather boots would be made. So um, this is a, a material that's specifically engineered with a nylon polyester matrix. It's made here in the USA. Um, there's no PVC, there's no plasticizers, and there's no off-gassing of chemical compounds when they make this. Um, so it's very sustainable, environmentally safe, uh, but it works, feels, looks just like animal leather. One of the things that Kat was telling me before the show is that she actually kind of came up with the idea and started marketing it before you actually had the product. That's correct. So <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily take business advice from myself. 
Um, but I, I used the tools that I had in my wheelhouse. You know, when starting a sidekick business, I, I couldn't afford to quit my full-time career. So um, I started with sales and marketing because that's the experience that I had. And I created a name, I created a tagline, I created a website, and I started going to vegan events promoting my vegan cowboy boots and I didn't have a product. <laughs> and people were coming up to my booth and they were like, uh, can we order? Where do we order? And finally, my husband set me aside and said, Kat, I think it's time that you go figure this out. And I had to get busy. So I contacted, uh, read an article, of the 25 top, big, uh, not vegan, sorry, the 25 top um, handcrafted boot makers in Texas. And I sent them all a very compelling email of why they should work with me. And only three responded. One said, no way. Two said, that's not really in our wheelhouse. Uh, and the third one said, hey, send me some material. I'll give it a go. And so the next hurdle I had was finding the material. I didn't even have a, a manufacturer yet. So I searched around. I wanted to keep all my products and uh, supplies USA-based. Uh, my boots are made here in Texas, so everything's USA produced and made. Um, and I found a company in the Northeast that, you know, I could get the vegan. They just focus on vegan alternative materials. So they sent me some material. I sent it to my boot maker. He sent me the prototype, and I literally fell on the floor crying when I received it. I love stories like that. We're going to put up some, some more pictures of her amazing uh, Western wear. Uh, you have to be so proud. What kind of reaction do you get? So it's been very, very satisfying, gratifying that um, mo the response is very encouraging, very positive. Uh, you know, any entrepreneur, anybody that's trying to get a small local business started and uh, be successful knows the struggles that you can have. So there's been times when I've just like basically want to hang up my hat, you know, put my boots away and say, forget it. And then I'll get an email from someone halfway around the world and say, oh, I found your website. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing to help animals. All my proceeds go back to animal welfare. So that encourages me and keeps me going and know that I'm making a difference and giving people a choice and alternative and that there's less animals harmed in because people are making these better choices and they're learning that not just my company, but other Big fashion lines have alternative sure. materials now to use. So uh, right now, people can get the boots off your website. Is there are they in stores? Or are they designed to be in stores? So right now, everything is online. Mm -hmm. So a customer can go on. They're all um, custom designed. They can choose the style. They can choose the material color, the stitching color. We have different heel heights and different toe box shapes. Um, so they're made completely per order. That's perfect. So you're not stocking up a bunch of inventory, and, and that probably saves you as a business owner for, for overproducing. It does, and it also gives people the opportunity to make their own design in their own boot. I want anybody to be able to wear uh, the vegan boots. So there's a lot of people that just can't go into a store and get a boot off the shelf, and it fit proper, properly. So because we are handcrafted, we can customize to meet somebody's foot quirk or, you know, a size that, again, they just couldn't go, go in and buy a boot off the shelf. So uh, that's another reason why I wanted to keep everything very handcrafted and, and small. Are you always kind of uh, designing new boots in your mind when you look always. at them? <laughs> always. <laughs> You've got two or three designs going right now. Always, yes, yes. And then two, inspiration, right? Um, when I started, of course, you know, the internet's been around, but social media has just, you know, we've been flooded with, you know, Instagram with pictures and inspiration that you get from social media. So it's real easy when I'm shopping or I'm looking online and I see something that's not an animal leather boot, but, you know, I think, oh, okay, we can definitely make that because making a boot is basically like having a blank canvas. Mm -hmm. You can just turn it into anything that you want to. Okay. We're almost out of time. So final thoughts, what would you like to leave people with? Well, I would like people to know that um, if you're not ready to choose uh, vegan, either a lifestyle of eating that way or, or wearing uh, vegan leather, that at least be open to uh, consider how your choices impact the environment and how they impact the animals. And when you're out shopping, read labels, look at tags, and know that there are quality alternatives out there. Thanks to technology, these materials are really advanced. 
and you can have a luxury quality high-end product that's made with alternatives. Outstanding. You're made right here in Texas. We're going to end with her website, which is catmindenhall.com. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. You bet. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.